Greetings Minecrafters, Nonsanity here, and welcome to a short tutorial on a particular technique of using integrated dynamics and the add-on integrated tunnels to control drops in the world. Now there are many mods that benefit from having control over items dropped in the world. Here I've got a block of coal, which if I pick up, it is replaced automatically with a new block of coal. Likewise, if I throw more blocks down, the extras are picked up so that only one remains. So this system is designed to keep one of an item sitting in the world, and if it despawns or is destroyed by something or used up by a process, then a new one is dropped down. Also, one of the side effects of this mod lets you control the lifespan up to 600 million ticks, which is quite a bit of time, which is better than the 6,000 it normally is. All right, so how do we build this? Let's go over here and build a fresh copy so you see how everything works. Now you're going to need a logic programmer. I'm just going to set that off to the side. It does not need to be uh, part of the network. You will need a variable store and a temporarily a materializer, which I'm just going to stack on top and then delete it when we're done using it. Now I'm going to set up the spot over here. This is going to be where we want our materials to be dropped. And I'm going to set up a chest over on this side. Using the integrated tunnels mod parts now, we're going to put down an item interface. This lets the system access the contents of the chest. We're going to put down a world item exporter and a world item importer. And then using one of the built-in integrated dynamics items, the entity reader. And that is all the block building we need to do. So I'm going to toss these things up there and bring down some other items. All right. Okay. Now. This process is not intuitive because it uses some elements of the mod that are not clearly stated. And that may be because some of it is part of the basic mod and part of it is part of the uh, add-on. So let's start with one of the things we need to do to set things up. And that is we need a piece of cobblestone. It doesn't have to be cobblestone, it could be anything you want but I'm going to use cobblestone just as the indicator that there is, that it's not important. It's going to be a placeholder. Now, if we look in the entity reader here, it's got this entity slot, and you see there's nothing in it. If I now toss down the piece of cobblestone and go back in there, you can see it says entity cobblestone. This is the floating entity of an item drop. Now, I'm going to toss, scroll down, toss it, a variable card in there and get the variable card for the entity of an item stack of cobblestone. All right. Now I just picked that back up. I don't want to do that. Now we'll explain why in a moment. Normally when you have, if you want to have a permanent reference to an item, you use the materializer up here. Now I can go ahead and put this entity object in here and it says cobblestone. It knows it's cobblestone. Put a blank card in, and I get variable card entity cobblestone. All right, that seems like a good thing. Let's go ahead and put a display down here and toss that in. And it says cobblestone. It says it knows what we have dropped here. All right, let's pick that up. Uh-oh. We materialized it, which should make it a permanent, and, uh, permanent reference to cobblestone. But now it says unknown. Really, what this did with an entity is made a permanent item and item drop entity reference, but the contents is not locked in as well. So now it says unknown. That is not going to work for our purposes. We need a permanent cobblestone item, not an entity. So we go over here to the programmer here. If we type in entity we'll see this item here. This takes an entity, which we have, and gives us 
an item. But this item, if we take out this guy here and just put in this, oh yeah, and I have to toss this guy now into the variable store. And it's not showing its, oh, it lost the cobblestone. That's right. So it seizes the cobblestone. As soon as we pick it up, it stops being cobblestone. So now we need to materialize it. Uh, make sure the cobblestone's there while we do this. So we take this reference to the item in the world and turn it into a permanent cobblestone reference. Now there are other ways to do this, but I wanted to show it this way because it will be important later. I'll toss that one in there so that the system understands those elements. And I can put this in here, and it is always going to be one cobblestone, even if we pick it up. That is permanently a one cobblestone item reference. See, it says cobblestone in it, even. But we're going to need to modify this for our purposes later. So let's go ahead and do that now. There is something called width size. Well, first, before we do width size, let's get some integers. I'm going to need two integers. I'm going to need a zero. There's our zero. And I'm going to need a one. There's our one. All right, now we can go to width size. This takes an item and an integer. So here's our cobblestone item. And we're going to use item, the integer of zero. And now we have an item with stack size. So this is Co uh, uh, cobblestone stack of size zero, which is basically nothing. We do not need these anymore. Our, we've realized, our, materialized our cobblestone, so it is permanently going to be cobblestone. But now we have this version of cobblestone of stack size zero, which seems odd, but we'll come back to that in a bit. We will need it for later. Now it is always cobblestone with zero. Can't it see? Oh, it needs the integer of zero. Put that in there. And now it's happy. But you see there's nothing displayed. Why? Normally with an item it would display a picture of the item and the number of how many there are. But since this is an item stack size of zero, it's not displaying anything. But as you can see up in the tooltip, it says value item. It's a valid item, even though it is a size zero. All right, continuing on. We want to be able to manipulate whatever items are in this spot. So let's toss down an item. And let's go into the entity reader. And we have a list of entities right here. So we've now got a list of entities. Now you would think that you'd just be able to go into the logic programmer and to get and or even to keep it even simpler, do head. Head gives you the first item in a list. So we put this list in here, give it a card. This is the first item in the list. So we've got, put down an object here, stick this list in the variable store, stick the first item, and it says logic cable. It knows there's a logic cable there. The problem with this method is, when there's nothing there, trying to get the first item of the list Ooh, ooh, error. There is nothing, there's no first item of the list. And that's going to, excuse me, that's going to break everything else that's downstream from this information. So we can't do that. Throw that away. Instead, there is something called get or get, list get or default, where you give it a list, give it an integer. And uh, I'm going to need that zero back again. No sense making a second one. So the list, an index into the list, and zero is the first item in the list. And it needs a default value when the list is empty. It'll give you the first item in the list, and if the list is empty, it gives you whatever you put here. The problem is, this is a list of entities. And what I need to put here, then, would be a single entity. And you cannot make a materialized entity, as we've just seen. You can make a materialized item that exists irregardless of what's in the world. But you can't make a 
entity object that doesn't actually point to a real entity object in the world. And we don't want to set up a permanent entity for it to look at. So this is where we get to the not quite intuitive. There is something here called map. Map takes an operator and a list and returns another list. We need to look at operators. That's the only green thing in the list here is the operator. And it's not very well explained. What you have to do here is type entity, and you'll get a list of these five items and a dot, dot, dot. If you use the arrow key, down arrow key, you can scroll through this until you get to entity item. And it, for some reason, that doesn't always work. But if you can type it in, entity item, and click it. All right, so entity transformed to item. That is the purpose of this operator. Converts entities to items in a list using the map. Now we go to the map, say entity to item. This is our list. This list we get in return is a list of items. It is whatever entities are in that spot over there, but now it's a list of items. So we put the zero back in, put this operator in, put our original list of entities back in, and now we have this list of operators, which it now you can see in the tooltip it says it's an empty list. If we toss down an item, it says logic cable. If we had something else there too, like uh, put down logic cable and a piece of coal. We now have a list of logic cable and coal. And those that's a list of items now. So that is exactly what we want. But it's going to return an empty list when there's nothing there. If we tell it to give us the first item in that list, it's going to break when there's nothing there, as we saw. So now is when we use that default. Oh, we can take a, get this back out here. So go to the default, get or default. We put our list of items in. We get our index of zero back. Once again, there we go. Index of zero, the first item in the list. Now we've got our cobblestone item with a stack size of zero. That is going to be our default item. So this guy now, if we put our zero value in, we put this list in, and we need the cobblestone guy in there. So we have the original cobblestone and the cobblestone with stack size of zero. And we put this get or default object in here. Look, it's blank. It says there's an item, but it's blank. That's our cobblestone with size zero. And if we toss in a piece of coal, look, it's a piece of picture of a piece of coal with a one. If we switch to the pipes and toss them in there, there's four pipes in there. One of them didn't quite make it in. There's four pipes in there. If we pick it up, there's no red X. There's just a blank screen. There's a, an object of size, stack size zero, which is actually what we'd love to have. All right, we're making progress. Now it's time to start actually doing something with this. So let's take this guy out. And we'll go over here. Well, first, let's go look at the exporter and importer. We'll look at the importer first. We want to make sure that if there's more than one item, everything gets picked up except one. Now, right here, this is got pick up all item entities, pick up item entities. If you hover over it and press shift, it says pick up the given amount of items from the world. Uh, this one is pick up a specific item. This is pick up a list of specific items. This is pick up the item entities from the world that match the given predicate. Predicate is that operator. It can do more stuff. And this is MBT matches. There's a bunch of these things. But we want this one right here. Pick up the given amount of items from the world. It doesn't care what the items are, but it'll pick up a certain number. Now, the number we'd want it to pick up is one less than what's there. 
what's there is nothing, then it's going to pick up negative 1, which is the same as 0. If there's, if there's one item there, it's going to pick up 1 less than 1, which is 0. It won't pick up anything. It'll leave it alone. If there's two or more, if it's two, then it'll subtract one, one. It'll pick up one, leaving one. That's what we want. So let's go over here. We need to find out how many items are actually there. So we want the size of this stack. So we get that. Size of that stack. And we want to subtract one from it. So the size of that stack, minus one, here's where we're using our one variable, gives us one minus how many are there. So now if I come over here and I put these guys into the system, so that's that one, that one. So here, this is our subtraction result. And I put that into the importer in the orange slot. And see it says negative one. It's trying to pick up negative one item. Now there's no items there. If we put down, let's go to the coal, put down a piece of coal, it does not pick it up. If we open it up and look, it's trying to pick up zero. If we put down a few, it picked them up, leaving one behind. And the extras are over here in this chest. All right, we've got the thing that picks up the extras, but now we need the opposite for putting things out. So let's grab our number one and our stack size. I'm going to come back over here and go back to the subtract. This time we're going to reverse the order of these two guys. We're going to say take one and subtract the number of items that are actually there. And give us the result. So what does that mean? All right, if there was nothing there, one minus zero is one. It's going to spit out one item. If there's one item there, then one minus one is a zero. It's not going to spit out anything. If there's more than one, it's going to have a negative number. One minus two is negative one, which is the same as it's not going to spit anything out. It can't spit out a negative number. So we can come over here to the orange place item entities and put this new number here. It says one. Now there's nothing in the chest. Let's go put some coal in the chest. Boop. It just spit out a piece of coal. If we pick it up, boop, it spits out another one. Drop two, picks up the extra. We're done. This was now going to keep one item here. But I suggest, as I said before, going into the settings here to lifespan and keep adding zeros until this green check mark turns red and back one off. That will give you 600 million ticks. I also suggest reducing the velocity to zero because it looks nicer that the item is dropped straight in the center of the block every time. And that's it. We don't need the materializer anymore, don't need this. This is our system. And if we took all of these and chucked them in there, Oof, they all get picked up Oop. <laughs> and dropped in the chest. So there you have it. There is a way to use integrated dynamics and integrated tunnels to have control over items dropped in the world. And the nice thing is, if we take all these coal out and pick this one up, so now it has nothing to work with, and I drop a stack of logic cables there, there's one cable. Pick it up. It doesn't matter what the item is, which is good because changing the item among all those variables would be a pain. All you have to do is clear out whatever's in the system. Because I think if you have two different things, it's going to use whatever's, yeah, whatever's first in the chest. But I think if you put down more than one item, yeah, because it's only looking at the first stack, that's the only one it cares about. I pick up the coal and not the tube. And I pick up the tube. It's going to put a piece of coal out. Yep. Whatever, whatever it drops is whatever is in the first slot. If I had a bunch of coal and a bunch of tubes, the coal was dropped first, so it's going to pick up the. Oh, excuse me. The tubes were dropped first, so it's going to pick up all but one of the tubes, and it's going to ignore the coal. 
So really this only works with a single item type. But it doesn't care what that item is. If you wanted to switch this over to be blocks of coal, you could do it. Just take out all the coal and put in some blocks of coal and it'll work. So there you go. I hope that helps. And if you like this and want me to do more tutorials on this mod and the add-on, please let me know. And I'll be happy to research it and make a video. So this is Nonsanity, signing out. Take care, be good, and see you next time.